All right, so in this video, I just want to share this with you guys real quick. It just came across my desk that DeepSeek just released a new large language model. And again, what's really cool about this is that it's open sourced. I haven't actually used it, but when I saw this and I saw all the features that are going to be available, or really, I guess, all the good things about it, I want to share that with you guys. So whenever a large language model is released, I don't really care too much about the metrics. I know that every time somebody releases, they have all these benchmarks and it does better and this and that. But I think at the end of the day, I mean, you give anybody any type of test ahead of time, you know, you give me a test on any topic. If I have time to review it, study for it, I'm going to do well. I kind of feel like it's like this for the training of these large language models. I'm probably oversimplifying it, but that's just my take because I've tested new large language models and I just wasn't happy with the performance of some of them, even though it was supposed to be better. But here are some of the things I think are promising about DeepSeek. I've used it slightly before, but even though they did have this chat interface, I didn't like it too much because I wasn't able to save multiple chats. So I didn't like the feeling that I just felt like I was having to constantly start over. So I ended up forgetting about it. But what I think you guys are going to like is the pricing on this. So if you all recall, GPT-4 was pretty expensive. It was around $10 per million tokens. Now with GPT-4.0, I think it came down to about $5 per million tokens. But for those of you that have worked with APIs, I think you saw how quickly those costs add up. But for DeepSeek, it ends up being $0.14 cents per million tokens. And that's if you're using the API, if you already have the GPU to run it, well, you can just download it from Olama and I mean, you're going to be good to go. And I almost forgot to mention for the open source, you get two versions. There's a 236 billion parameter, which is 133 gigabytes. And then there's a 16 billion, a lot smaller. So assuming you have a hefty CPU or maybe even if it's not the most powerful, then you have a couple of options. Again, I haven't tried this myself, but I'm excited by the fact that it's open source, that you get two options on there. I'm excited by the fact that their API costs are super low. So yeah, I really just wanted to share it with y'all. Let me know in the comments if you've already tried it out on your own or if you plan on trying it in the near future. I'm still doing free one-on-one -on -one calls if you feel like you're getting stuck on some of these projects or you feel like you're not sure where to go in order to start learning about AI applications. So you can click there, it'll take you to a calendar and you can book a session with me for free. So again, just super excited for this, guys. Large language models are getting better, especially for complex tasks like coding. I definitely love the output that I get from Claude 3. But one thing I don't like about that service is it just seems like I'm so quickly getting limited on the amount of questions I can ask. Granted, I do use it pretty heavily. I think GPT-40 works great and the cost did go significantly down. But if you're using it to build an application or for something like agent frameworks, those costs, they get pretty high pretty quickly, especially if you're just testing things out. So I guess we'll see in the next upcoming month or maybe even just the next few weeks whether it's actually a game changer or not. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.